He represents one of the building powerhouses of the world. Joe Kayser of Siemens, thank you so much for joining Very NDTV. And it is an exciting time here in Davos. What is the sense that you're getting on the themes of globalization, geopolitical crisis, a real sense of uncertainty? And correct me if you're wrong, but you did predict in 2016 that 2017 is going to be a complicated year. Yeah, well, I actually said already in uh, 2015 when we did the guidance for 16 that the single biggest risk to our uh, economic uh, performance in Siemens will be the geopolitical development. So this uh, actually was not uh, rocket science uh, because what we have been seeing is that there was a rise in populism, there is global migration, there is climate change, there is, uh, you know, the fourth industrial revolution, and there is more and more short-termism instead of long-term thinking. So if you put all those five topics together, you could see that the world at some point comes to a situation where the society is just not willing to put up with it anymore, and there will be some sorts of protests. Some people go on the street, others vote in a different manner as they used to, and that causes a lot of change. So I would not uh, think that globalization is the issue itself, because globalization is a very good thing, because it lets everyone participate in the global development, so that you know everyone can share a piece of the pie of global civil development. I think the challenge we have, and this is not just for the politicians and the governments in the world, this is also for the economic leaders who are being represented here, is that we cannot afford to have, you know, the divide between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots, come to an extent that people are not willing to put up with it. Because that's been the single biggest reason for the rise of populism. And that's what we have a responsibility for. And we need to take this very seriously and not just point that politicians or people who vote maybe differently than some have thought, you know, it's our problem which we need to solve. Right. Let me ask you about the India story because uh, you have obviously invested a huge amount of money and you're expanding it. But your assessment of Prime Minister Modi's foray into digitization, smart cities, make in India, is that a reality on the ground? Are you seeing a, a sort of real vision shape up? Yeah, I do believe he is up to be doing the right things. I met him uh, several times uh, in the meantime. Remember two years ago, uh, India was the partner country of the Hanover Industrial Fair, which is the, sing the world's single biggest uh, industrial fair. And he asked me, he said, you know, you are Siemens, you are almost, you're actually, I consider you to be an Indian company because you are on the stock exchange and you have been in India for so long. So tell me what needs to be done, you know, because we want to be industry 4.0. And I said, uh, you know, you um, your Excellency, I mean, first of all, our experience has been you cannot leapfrog from industry 1.0 to 4.0. This is not the way it works. We need to work our way up from electrification, automation, and then comes the digital enterprise. So I think the good thing about India is you've got so many young people. You've got the democracy. Everyone speaks... Uh, more or less, you know, English. So there is a lot of things we can be do. It's a vibrant continent. It's not a country, it's a continent. So you have everything it takes to move fast. And the good thing is, you are very good at software already. So why don't we start, you know, learning how to manufacture, how to automate? But before doing that, our experience has been, if we need to develop a society, everything starts with a reliable, an affordable, and a sustainable energy. And then comes the infrastructure, a reliable infrastructure, moving people and goods in a very efficient way. And think, if you think about India and the inflation, which you know was a big issue, the inflation didn't come from high interest rates, the inflation came from inefficiency in getting the agricultural goods from the field of the farmers to the ones who need to buy them. A lot of stuff was rotting in the warehouses or couldn't be transported. So lack of infrastructure causes inflation. So I, I, I was asking him, you know, I said, look, build your country 
and your society from energy to infrastructure to industrialization. And then you have all the prerequisites to be a, if not the leading economy in the world. He was listening well. I think he's doing the right things. Reforms sometimes are complicated, but I'm very, very, very confident that this time it will not only uh, be made in India, it will be happening in India. <laughs> happening in India. That's the new line which the government of India might uh, steal from you uh, well, right I'll be now. happy so to, uh, <laughs> because we are there, we can help. <laughs> but let me, let me just talk about that point where you said that you can't leapfrog, you have to build a solid base. So in that context, when moves like demonetization, for instance, happen in India, is that a disruptive move or is that a move which actually helps people like yourself, businesses like yourself, to show more interest in India? Well, I mean, it was obviously a spectacular move. Uh, I just happened to go to India a few days after this all uh, was executed. I think if everything gets executed so fast and so enthusiastically, uh, then I think uh, India is on the right path. Now, was it good or bad? Um, the answer is I really don't know. This is an internal matter. This is also not just about monetary policies. It's also about fighting corruption and those type of things. So this is a very internal matter which the government, government needs to decide. So right or wrong, but they did it in a fabulous way. All right. Uh, the message will come only after uh, it the writing is on the wall. But let's go back to Siemens plans and particularly when you talk about sustainable energy in the India context and you made acquisitions. I know there's a merger which is in the process of just closing up. Yes. But in your expansion on the sustainable energy front, what are the main drivers that India offers? Well, the main drivers definitely is that we do believe the future is about renewable energy. And if you look at what you know was agreed upon and in the meantime, you know, accepted by so many countries in the world, which was called COP21 in Paris, that's been a magnificent step. First time, you know, almost every country has been signing up and said, this is what we're going to do. Was good. Then, the, you know, then the G8 was saying, well, by the year 2100, this should be hydrocarbon free. So the vision is all great. But, you know, it's important to answer now the question, what do we do in the 84 years between today and hydrocarbon free? So we need to slowly but surely and diligently develop the uh, energy agenda. So we must not jump to things too quickly. So that's why we have always been a promoter to go renewable, but, uh, but also bring the cost down for renewable energy, not just subsidize it because of the sake of green energy. So there's got to be a meaningful economic concept for ecological and sustainable energy and that's what Siemens is up to that's why we uh, you know we uh, announced the planned merger with the Gamesa that makes us the world largest renewable energy company uh, with an installed base of 91 gigawatt with that this is not about a power play to become a number one this is a prerequisite to get the cost down you know by installed base by service by efficiency and then today already we can go into the just about three cent uh, per kilowatt hour and that's already very close to uh, to uh, you know fossil power plants and then we need to solve the storage system and have the right energy mix between fossil and between renewable and this is how we develop it and this is what we can offer by also by the merger with Gamesa because if you are big and strong and focused then you can you know get the cost down for your customers. I know building countries and building the world takes a long time and these are gestation Good. periods and you coming from a 19th century company formed back in the 19th century know that all too well but you've kept in touch with all the changes using software sensors <clears throat> to enable this journey so your vision as a world of automation kicks in, new technology kicks in, your vision for Siemens in the near term? Vision for Siemens is that we transform our company to a business to society. That's what I want our company to be. I want our company to be a company which offers value to society. And I'm a very strong believer that any company which does not provide value to society should not exist. So why is that? I believe that all the digital age, everything which is in the future, will not happen if you don't include the society that they see the value 
of civilization, of technology, and last but not least also of globalization. If we cannot do that, then you have a situation, as we discuss here today, about crisis and everything else. And that's not what we are paid for. You know, leaders like us, we are paid for solving problems. We are paid for showing the way and not being paid for saying, oh my God, we have a problem. That's not uh, what leaders should be. Leaders should show the way. They should take the flag and run first and give example to our people. Right, we look forward to hearing more answers from you, Joe. Okay, so many thanks Thank for you speaking much. with Thank us. Thank you.